This lesson starts our chapter on what are called linear equations, and for the next several years of your math career, you'll be graphing very different types of equations. The one that we concentrate on in eighth grade is called a linear equation. A linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line, and the points on the line are called solutions of the equation. So in example one, this is the most basic way to graph a line. We're going to go through more advanced ways to graph a line as we get further into this chapter. But anytime you have an equation like we do here, and you don't know how to graph it, you make what's called a table of values. And this right here is a table of values that we're going to plug in. Now, also, this phrasing right here tells us that they want us to start at negative 2 and include all the x values that go from negative 2 all the way up to 2. So I'm going to start in my table and fill in. That's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So that's what this means. This means this. It's telling me x is between negative 2 and 2. So now I just plug in. I rewrite the um, equation that I have, but instead of x, I put negative 2. Oh, whoops, sorry. So let's do some math. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So that means that when I go to graph, the point negative 2, 5 will be on my graph. So let's go to the next one. y equals negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means that I'm going to end up including the point negative 1, 3. I'll do one more with you. y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 1. That is going to end up being 1. And so that means that I'll end up graphing the point 0, 1. Can you please pause the video and finish the table? So check your points with mine, and then let's go to the graph, and let's graph them. So I have to make an xy coordinate grid, and you see not only have I put arrow tips on all of my axes, but I've also labeled x and y. That's very important so your reader knows how to look at your paper, because if you handed your paper in sideways, so you know how sometimes we turn our grid sideways to fit the graph if we're graphing points? Um, your reader doesn't know which way you want them to hold the paper, and if you don't tell your reader, then it could be marked totally wrong. And then all you have to say is, oh no, I meant for you to hold it this way, and the reader says, oh, okay, no big deal. So let's graph. So I'm going to graph the points that I plotted. And then I'm going to connect them using a straight line. Now, if you have a ruler handy, I want you to use it. Um, I'm going to call it y equals negative 2x plus 1. You should always write the equation on the line. And that's it. That's graphing a line. There are two other types of lines, horizontal and vertical. And what I want you to get out of this summary right here is that if your equation says y equals and just a number, so like y equals 2 or y equals negative 8, those are all going to be horizontal lines. When there's no x over here, it's horizontal. Vertical lines say x equals. So if it says like x equals 2 or x equals negative 8, then those are all going to be vertical lines. So here's how I remember it. If you are a y equals line, you intersect the y-axis only. So if you look at this line, you see it's only intersecting the y-axis. The x-axis is down here. It's not touching that. It's only touching the y-axis because it's a y equals line. And then the opposite happens over here. This only touches the x-axis because it's an x equals line. You see this line only touches the x-axis, the y-axis doesn't intersect the line at all. And that's how I remember what axis they're supposed to go through. So let's check 
um, a couple of examples where we graph these. Example 2, graph y equals negative 3. So I'm going to do my xy grid again. And before we go to graph any points, I'm just going to make up some values, make up some points to plot where the y is negative 3. So here's just some that I'm making up randomly. 0, negative 3. 4, negative 3. 2, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 3. I just randomly made up these points. So now I'll plot them. 0, negative 3, 4, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, 2, negative 3. And you see they are going through that y-axis hitting at a horizontal line. y equals negative 3. So there's no table of values necessary for one of these. You just have to be able to spot them, and they're much quicker to graph. Let's look at letter B. I've got my xy grid, and now I'm just going to make up a couple of values where the x is 2. So let's make up, uh, these are just randomly made up points, 2, 5, 2, 0, 2, negative 3. So let me plot those. 2, negative 5, 2, 0, and 2 negative, oh, that was, sorry, oops, that's two, negative five. Two, five is up here. I hope you all caught that, and we're going to tell me that I was wrong. And two, negative three. And so this x equals two line crosses the x-axis. It doesn't cross the y. So there's, those are just some shortcuts to do it if you want to. You can always make up some points. You just have to know what to look for. Last one together. The wind speed y of a tropical storm is y equals 2x plus 66, where x is the number of hours and y was miles per hour speed. So I just underlined some important information. After the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico, A, graph the equation. So before I even look at B, I'm going to do letter A. And if x represents the number of hours, does it make sense for me to have negatives? Can you have negative hours? No, you can't. So I'm going to start at 0 and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's plug in. y equals 2 times 0 plus 66. That's 66. So one of the points on the grid is 0, 66. I'll do one more with you. y equals 2 times 1 plus 66. That's 68. So one of the points on the grid is 0, 68. Please pause the video and finish filling in the table. I just realized that this right here is supposed to be a 1. As I was filling the rest of my table, I realized I was wrong. So this is a 1. I apologize if you were confused. 168. Now that just looks terrible. Okay, so that's 168. So now I have to um, make my grid. And again, I'm not going to have negative x values. So I'm actually not even going to go into any other quadrant. I'm going to actually stay in quadrant 1. So I'm going to graph this big L, which puts me only in quadrant 1. Um, I have to go, I have to start at 66, so what you can do when you have a line graph only is you can make this little squiggle, and that means that you can skip. So this is still zero, but I'm skipping all this unnecessary information because there's no numbers below 66 for my grid. So I'm going to start at 66, and I'll go by 1, so 67, 68, 69, and so on. This goes 1, 2 three, four, etc. So now I plot 0, 66, 1, 68, 2, 70, 3, 72, and 4, 74. Connect it with a straight line and write the equation somewhere near it. And now we move on to letter B. 
when does the storm become a hurricane? So that information's over here. A tropical storm becomes a hurricane when wind speeds are at least 74 miles per hour. So 74 miles per hour happened here when X was 4. I got 74. So 4 hours. Okay. If you have any questions... Write them down on your note sheet or on, a, or on a separate sheet of paper and ask me when you see me in class.